Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the sixth of a nine-part series on understanding how to parse JSON using Codable Protocol in Swift and Swift UI. In this video, we'll see how we can create our own custom coding keys to decode JSON that is inconsistent, and another example on how you can conform Swift property wrappers to the decoding protocol. If this is something you want to learn, we'll keep watching. I've done a lot of API requests, and for the most part, I've not needed to consider any custom coding strategies beyond what we discussed in the last video. However, I have come across two cases recently that I'd like to show you how I had to deal with them. The first example is this one that I came across as I was doing some research for my, my bookshelf application. One of the APIs I was using provided me with a JSON response that looked like this. Do you see the problem? It's an array of objects, and each object has a feed key whose value is another object, and this is consistent, and an entry key. But look closely. In the first item of the array, the entry value is an array itself of objects. But in the second, it's a single object. The objects are the same, but the first time there's an array, and the second time there isn't. I'll create a decodable book struct and inside that, I'll create two structs, one for feed, which is decodable, with two string properties. And then another decodable struct for entry, with two string properties as well. In both cases, as I showed you, feed is a single object, so we can just use let feed equals feed. But for entry, it's an array of entries in the first item of the book array, but the second one is just a single entry object. If we create our entry property as an array of entries like this, we're going to have some decoding problems. The way I had to deal with this was to create coding keys with a custom initializer that would convert a single entry object into an array with only one element. The first thing we do is set up the coding keys enum. Remember, it has to be a string enum conforming to coding key, and we have to list all of the book properties for the cases. That's the feed and entry. Unlike in the last video, we simply assigned different strings to each case. We can extend the book structure to conform to decodable property by implementing its initializer. We can start by adding init from decoder, decoder, and it throws. Inside there, the first thing we need to do is extract a container that we can read using the keys of our coding key enums like this. Let container equals try decoder.container keyed by coding keys.self. Since this initializer will be called when the decoder we define tries to decode the data, we can safely just use try without exclamation mark here and let any errors bubble up to the decoder and handle them there. With the container defined, we try to assign each of the keys to the corresponding property type. Feed will work all of the time, so we can simply type feed equals try container.decode, and feed is our type, and dot feed is the coding key for our book. The entry object is different. Sometimes it might be an array, and other times not. So we wrap this in a do try catch block that first attempts to read it as an array. If it finds an array, then great, we can specify that we want to decode the entry as an array of entry objects, similar to what we just did for feed. The type's an array of entry for the dot entry key. If it fails, we want to create a single value and then add it to an empty array, thus giving us the expected result of an array of entry objects. So let's create a new value where we'll try to decode the key value entry for just a single entry object. Once we have that, we can then add it to an already empty array, so entry now becomes an array of that single new value. We can test this in the usual manner by creating our decoder, then converting that string into data, and then try decoding the array of books from the book JSON data. 
Let's run a loop on books and print out the publisher from the feed object and the author from each of the entry objects. As expected, we get two authors from the first one and one from the second. As I'm getting more and more into SwiftUI, I came across another problem when I was using an observable object and one of the properties marked as at published. It had an at published property wrapper. I started out with this simple class with two properties. It's a user class. I had no problem making the class conform to observable object, but when I wanted to specify that one of the properties was to be published by adding the at published property wrapper, it wouldn't compile. The name property is automatically wrapped inside another data type that adds some additional functionality that doesn't conform. To do this, we just have to create our own coding keys. So, as before, we create an enum coding keys, that is string, conforming to coding key, and list both of our properties as cases. And then, as in the previous example, we create an initializer for this. But because the user is a class, we have to use the required keyword. And inside the initializer, we extract the container exactly like in our first example. And then assign each of our properties to the contents that come from the container, making sure that our types are the expected types, so string for name and int for age. The error goes away, and now our class is decodable. In the next video, we'll cover the final topic in the decodable portion of our codable protocol, and we'll look at parsing JSON that comes from an API. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have learned something. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That will encourage me to keep on creating more like this in an effort to help new and existing iOS developers hone their skills and move on to the next level. I am most active on Twitter, so be sure to follow me there and get all the latest news of what I'm up to.